no, you're not gonna buy a PlayStation 5 Pro and get a 4070 inside of it. So there's been a lot of debate been going online, especially since something just happened on Twitter. So a lot of people have been running with this whole idea that there's gonna be a 4070 inside of PlayStation 5 Pros because a post that Destin Legary did, I don't remember his name, but it's someone from Digital Foundry and he gave an interview and now everyone is like clipping just a piece of the interview and not the whole actual thing. We're actually gonna go into it today about this 4070 inside of PlayStation 5 Pro. But anyway, if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, definitely do so, like the video, dislike, either or, but everything definitely helps out. The whole point I'm going over this video is not so much to necessarily bash the PlayStation 5 Pro. Again, I've said it in a bunch of different videos. I am a fan of the system PlayStation, I'm not a big fan of the company, but the system itself, I'm a fan of it. I have my PlayStation 5 here. I actually have a lot of games I plan on playing on the PlayStation 5 this year. One of the games I'm getting, even though I own all the systems, all the platforms, I'm getting Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm buying it on PlayStation because it just seems like that's the right system to play it on. And there's a bunch of other things that I plan on buying for the PlayStation over the Xbox or over the PC or whatever. But the reason why I'm making this video is because there's a lot of people that's misinformed thinking that if you buy a PlayStation 5 Pro, you have the equivalent of a 4070 in your computer, that graphics card, and that's just simply not the case. Like I said, a lot of people are taking a snippet of a video. It's when the guy from Digital Foundry said that when he was trying to get a graphics card on par to the PlayStation 5 Pro, he said the 4070, but the thing to really focus on that he was talking about was when it came to the ray tracing technology, it is not going in the aspect of performance, raw performance, that is not what's gonna happen with the PlayStation 5 Pro. And people just snipped that one part of it and didn't actually snip anything else. So I saw a bunch of people on Twitter running around saying, see here, the guy from Digital Foundry said it. So obviously, if you get a PlayStation 5 Pro, you'll have a 4070. Now it's funny because I guarantee you if someone from Digital Foundry said PlayStation 5 Pro is gonna be hot garbage, don't buy it, those exact same people are gonna be like, Digital Foundry doesn't know anything. The big takeaway from this is that, is it gonna look good? I mean, yeah, it's gonna look good because the thing is the PlayStation 5 already looks good. I'm talking about the base model, but the thing that people are forgetting about it is the CPU in the PlayStation 5 Pro has not been changed, upgraded, or anything. It's the exact same CPU for the most part that's in the regular PlayStation 5. That means when GTA 6 comes out, let's say for example next year, don't expect this to be running at 60 frames and definitely not 120 frames. They're already saying that it doesn't look like this is gonna be running at 60 frames. I know there's a bunch of optimizations you can do when it comes to console gaming, but ultimately it's more than likely gonna be at 30 frames. Now the game's gonna probably look really great graphically, but even with this game being on the PlayStation 5 Pro, expect it to be at pretty much, you know, 30 frames per second. Now, there's some other really important takeaways about the PlayStation 5 Pro, because I know there's a lot of people that are just so emotionally attached to this PlayStation brand, which personally, I don't care if it's an Xbox brand, even though Xbox is still my preferred brand, not because of the logo or because of brand loyalty or anything like that. I have multiple videos on why I do lean more to Xbox, but at the end of the day, I don't care what platform it is. If one's doing good, I'm gonna bring it up. If one's doing bad, I'm gonna bring that up. And when it comes to PlayStation, I just don't have brand loads, even though I have every PlayStation, and I do have a lot of nostalgic moments from the PlayStation 1 all the way to the 5, there's some things that I just don't understand why people get so hyped about this brand and they're so focused on the logo. I still sit in the camp that if you're gonna spend around $800 because I am factoring in tax, I'm not factoring in the disc drive because not everyone's gonna buy a disc drive. I'm not factoring in the stand because you don't necessarily need the stand and not everyone's gonna buy the stand. It is kind of scummy that you're not getting it. Like I said in my previous video, my PlayStation 5 right now has a disc drive. It does have a stand. So when you buy this new system, you're actually getting two things that are not included in the box when I bought mine, but that's a whole nother thing. The thing to factor in is if you are new to PlayStation 5, if this is your moment of saying, hmm, I think I'm gonna get a PlayStation that I haven't had a PlayStation, maybe you're an Xbox gamer, maybe you're a PC gamer, maybe you're a Switch gamer, but you, whatever you game on or if you don't game at all, if this is your entry point to PlayStation, I'll still lean heavily more to the PC than anything else, and I'll explain why in a minute. For the people that already own PlayStation and have those libraries, especially at least a digital library, it does make sense to a degree to get a PlayStation Pro because you already have that digital library over PC, for example. Because when you switch over to PC, you don't have that library following you. PlayStation does not have any play anywhere 
for example, like Microsoft does, where you switch over to PC, now you have a whole library of games. You're going to still have to buy all these games over again. That's something that you're gonna heavily have to factor in when it comes to if you wanna switch over to you know, PC or not. At the end of the day, in the long term, you're going to probably save more money on the uh, PC side over the PlayStation. Now, the thing is, the CEO, I believe it was the CEO of Sony or PlayStation, um, it was about a year or so ago, around the time when they said that they don't have any big exclusive games coming to PlayStation this year, they also said that expect more games to be going to PC. They wanna look more at the PC market. You're gonna have a relatively good PlayStation environment on PC, something that you probably haven't had before. Um, like I said in a previous video as well, I already said that I can take my PlayStation 5 controller, pair it to my PC, and have all the PlayStation 5 features of having that uh, DualSense controller. That's all there. I'm not really losing anything as far as that aspect goes. The other thing that you have to factor in, you're not paying for PSN, you're not paying for that monthly subscription that you are gonna pay with you know PlayStation. Now, for example, me personally, I do have the more premium tier, so I am spending like what is it, twenty dollars or about twenty dollars a month that you wouldn't have to spend if you're on PC. Now, you wouldn't get those benefits for sure, but if you're just someone that just wants to play online and that's about it, you know you're paying at least what is it, ten ish dollars, maybe more, I don't know, but you're paying at least ten dollars a month just to play online. Now, the other thing too that you want to factor in when going to PC is reports are already talking about that FSR 4 is coming out relatively soon. It could drop any day now. And so when that does come out, you will be able to build a PC system potentially for around seven, $800 that would demolish the PlayStation 5 Pro. Um, because of what it looks like FSR 4 is going to actually be able to do. Now, I know PlayStation has their pisser that they're using, the PSSR. That's what they call it, and everyone, I think, on the internet has dubbed it pisser. But you will have that option to be able to really compete with FSR 4. And that's something I'm actually looking forward to to see what that actually can do, that capability. There's a lot of reports on it. If you don't know a lot about FSR 4, I'm not going to go too deep into it in this video, but there's a bunch of videos already talking about it, so check those out. These are more things to consider. There are pre builds that are out right now there's some on twitter i'll see if i can find the one i was looking at in particular and i'll link it down in the description but there are computers that are already 800 dollars. again this is before tax but it is 800 dollars, so a little bit more than the playstation 5 pro but can already do better performance than the playstation 5 pro can do and it's a pre-built um for those people that don't know how to build computers, you already have that there. Now, for the ones that do know how to, they want to do the upgrade and everything like that, I know a lot of people are talking about, oh, you got to buy the OS, and you have to buy a keyboard and mouse. I mean, yeah, but first off, no one's factored in the fact that the PlayStation 5 Pro can do 8K. No one's buying a $2,000 monitor or factoring that in to their builds. So I don't know why we're factoring in the fact that you can get Windows for like 8 to 15 bucks online with a key. You can actually get it for free. You know, there are some limitations, like you can't change your wallpaper. Um, a watermark is gonna pop up at the bottom of your screen every now and then until you reboot. But, you know, I don't know why we're factoring in the OS for a few bucks into the build. Keyboard and mouse, again, that that can be a few bucks. Like what, like I, you can get them, you can get a combo pack for around $20 for a keyboard and mouse. Those aren't something that really is gonna throw your build overboard. In, in the monitor, you can hook your computer up to a television if you want to and put Steam in big picture mode and pretend like you have a console and then you have your controller there. You can even set your computer to immediately boot into big picture mode when you turn it on to make it more like a console. So when you say, oh, well, keyboard and mouse and all that stuff, you can use a controller. You don't even really need a keyboard and mouse um, after initial setup. So, you know, you don't have to get a sweet keyboard mouse, just get one for a couple of bucks, set it up, and then you never really need it again with big picture mode and your PlayStation 5 controller. I just don't understand why people are like really putting peripherals into those price ranges. But despite all of that, you can pretty much build a better computer than the PlayStation for not that much more money. It is gonna be more. I don't think you're gonna get the exact price because when you're building a console, there's a lot of things that they factor in. A lot of times these consoles are built at a loss. I don't think the PlayStation 5 Pro is. That's why the price is probably so high or at least as big of a loss that Sony usually is losing. There's a lot of stuff that, you're, that you have to factor in. Also, Sony's getting a lot of the stuff in bulk, so the price does go down even more. You're gonna be able to build this system um, and or get it pre-built either one and the thing is it's gonna last you significantly longer than the PlayStation 5 Pro when this system comes out when this PlayStation 5 Pro comes out in uh, what is it 
in a couple of months from now in November, you know for a fact that that is going to have like what four to six years of life and that's me really pushing it because you have to factor in also overlap from the five era to the playstation 6 era so you're going to have like overlap for sure but i'm really pushing it out there with that overlap when i say four to six it's probably more between four to five but with a pc you could extend it that much more when you go to upgrade it it's probably not gonna be as expensive as it is to buy a whole PlayStation 6. Because rumor and reports are already out there stating that this is Sony's way of just kind of testing the market, that the PlayStation 6 could also cost $700 or around that price, especially depending on how well this system sells, which is why I don't know people are so quick to pre-order and buy this thing up because you are now telling Sony, yes, please make systems cost more. And in turn, if Sony gets away with it, you know Microsoft is going to do it too. I do expect consoles to go up in the next, you know, generation. I think even the Switch is probably going to be around four hundred dollars, is what some rumors are stating. But at the end of the day, the thing to to know is that if you was to spend, let's say, eight hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars right now. Okay, you buy your system, it beats the PlayStation 5 Pro. With a PC, you can go ahead and maybe a few years later, spend just a few hundred dollars and get an even better graphics card if you need to upgrade. And it will probably beat the PlayStation 6. So, you know, the PlayStation 5 Pro, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we're so close to the end of the life cycle. If this system came out a few years earlier, like a year or two earlier, I'll be like, okay, it makes more sense. But I think the reason why they didn't do that is because PlayStation really hasn't had any games recently to show off. Like the games they showed off, one of them was, if not more, but I know one for a fact, was a PlayStation 4 game that they were showing, which was The Last of Us Part 2. That was not a PlayStation 5 game. Did they upscale it for the PlayStation 5? For sure, but it was a PlayStation 4 game. And that's what they're advertising their PlayStation 5 Pro game. It's like the equivalence if they showed us Killzone, for example, on the PlayStation 5 Pro. You know, it's cool that it does look better, but where are the games, you know, to really show the power? And I get it's hard to do that on YouTube with all the compression and stuff, but that probably wasn't one of the strongest games or the best games that they could have showed us. And the things, remember, going back to the CPU, like, for example, Space Marines 2 that's out right now is already having problems on the PlayStation 5. When it comes to the performance of it, it does struggle. I think the Xbox version does perform better technically. I am playing Space Marines 2 on the Xbox. That is not just gonna magically go away when you switch to PlayStation 5 Pro because again, it's using the same CPU. It's not doing anything different with the CPU. So since the CPU has not changed, don't expect this big change to happen, especially when GTA 6 comes out. Cause I know that's what I keep bringing up GTA 6. Cause I know a lot of you guys are really looking forward to that. And that's why a lot of you guys are really gassing up this PlayStation 5 Pro for GTA 6. So that's something I just want to get in a lot of people's head. This is not to just say, don't buy it. This is not, I do feel it's still a little scammy for PlayStation, but I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to change your minds, especially the ones that are the diehard PlayStation fans. It doesn't matter how much loss, it doesn't matter how much numbers and statistics you show them. Uh, the PlayStation purists are still going to stick to what they're going to do and you can't tell them anything. This is more for the ones that legitimately don't know if this is the right system to buy or not. And this is just me, you know, trying to let those people know. GTA 6 is not going to be on the PC for at least probably a year, uh, you know. We don't have an exact time frame, but I would say look at it for a year. So the thing is, if you're looking at, hey, I don't own any consoles, I'm only on PC, should I you know, go ahead and get this PlayStation 5 Pro for GTA 6. Personally, this is personally, I still say if you want to get a PlayStation 5 Pro for GTA 6, or just a PlayStation, I should say, for GTA 6, just get a regular PlayStation or an Xbox, but a PlayStation if that's the, that's the brand you want to go to. Because at the end of the day, spending $700 before taxes, for a game that's rumored right now to potentially be about another hundred dollars doesn't make sense. You can get a PlayStation, you know, depending on if you get it on sale or, you know, or whatever's going on, you may get it between four to five hundred ish dollars before tax. And then if you have to factor in that hundred dollars for GTA six, there you go. So there's a lot of reasons to me why the PlayStation Pro doesn't really make a lot of logical sense. If you already have a PlayStation, I just say just keep rocking the PlayStation 5 you have right now. Enjoy it. it the games already look great. And then when the PlayStation 6 comes out, just go crazy and get that. I'm still more in the camp for PC. I'm a person that has all the platforms, PC included. But at the end of the day, 
when it comes to spending your money, I wish I knew, you know, um, how much cheaper and more feasible getting the PC gaming actually was. Games in general, in the span of a year, I saved so much more money on games on PC, PlayStation games included. There's actually a sale as we speak, as I'm recording this video on Steam for PlayStation games. And that's the point, you can get PlayStation games on sale. These games on, on Steam, I didn't see the exact same sale prices on PlayStation. They, I think these were just Steam PlayStation prices. Right now, I just opened up Steam and The Last of Us is 40% off. Last of Us Part 1, for example. Um, it's $35.99 and it's usually 60 bucks. So, you know, and that's as soon as I opened up Steam. I didn't even look for that game. So my point is, you can get a very, very good, um, you know, PlayStation experience. Now, the other last thing I wanna bring up is porting. I do understand that porting can sometimes be an issue on PC. It does seem to be getting better though. A lot of games when it comes to ports seem to be getting better and better over time. Does Rockstar have the best record of porting? Not necessarily. So, you know, who knows how that's gonna be, but you do have the modding community that you don't have on the PlayStation 5 Pro. I will tell you this, again, for you GTA fans, you're gonna have a much better experience in the long run on PC than you will on PlayStation. Cause the thing is you're gonna play the game, you're gonna beat the game and that's gonna be it. But on the PC side, you have this huge modding community that's going to open up so many doors and so many pathways. Playing on PC is just a lot more fun. And again, it's a PC, you can do a thousand other things with it besides just play video games on it. So it's not like as some will call it a one trick pony, you know, hate to say it, but Xbox and PlayStation kind of are. Anyways, that's just my thought on this. Like I said, this is not to say don't buy it. This is not to convince the diehards. I get it. It's for the, what are they calling it? The PlayStation Elite or whatever. I don't know. But it's not to really change so much someone's thought process. This video is mostly just to let people know you're not getting a 4070 in this. Again, that was just the closest thing that the guy could reference as far as ray tracing goes, not performance. I think he even said something about if there was an AMD equivalent, he gave what the AMD equivalent would actually be because it's more closer to that. But people on Twitter are kind of losing their mind because I see so many people saying the most craziest things on Twitter about what this PlayStation 5 Pro can do and it really can't. You're going to be sorely mistaken when you see what this PlayStation 5 Pro is really going to be doing, especially when you think that all your games are going to be running in 60 and 120. A lot of your games, especially the graphic ones, are probably going to still be at 30 frames. Anyway, I hope this helped someone. If it helped anyone, definitely make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And share this to anyone that may need to know about it or to get some idea if they're actually trying to think about buying a PlayStation 5 Pro. You're going to enjoy it. I think if you do get a PlayStation 5 Pro, you will enjoy the product. But I can almost guarantee you there's going to be a lot of people that do get it because I feel like this is going to sell out. They're going to be horribly disappointed when they realize that this isn't that much different than what they already own. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys for sticking around. If you definitely stuck around for this long. And if you made it to the end, comment down below what you're going to get. PlayStation 5 Pro or PC. Um, and I'll make sure to like and I, can I pin more than one thing? I don't know if I can pin more than one thing, but if I can, I will. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.